Hi, this is Ten Ten Music's Series 1 module. Why do I say Series 1 and not Bitbox? Because there are three firmware versions you can load onto it. Bitbox, which is a sample player, slicer, and looper. FX Box, a real-time effects and sound mangling module. And Synthbox, a polyphonic wavetable synthesizer. And the idea is that with a simple SD card swap, you can load any of those three firmwares onto this module. In this video, I'll review all three modules or firmware versions, show you how they work, and talk about some pros and cons. Also noteworthy, 1010 Music also sell a Series 2 module, which as far as I know only has one firmware version for now, called Toolbox, a sequencer. Series 2 isn't a better version of Series 1, but rather has different physical port capabilities and is therefore designed for different tasks. Let's start by talking about the physical layout. First and most importantly, and this is what makes these modules unique, is this 3.5 inch touchscreen, which has multi-touch. And if you think about it, the original iPhone had a three and a half inch screen, so there's a lot to play with here. The screen and controls feel very responsive. It's bright and clear in full daylight and has brightness control if you want to use it at night. And what I really like about the experience is that they didn't succumb to temptation to pack a lot of information into it. Everything is really uh, well laid out and thought through. And so then there's this middle part. And the idea here is generally that each of these five by four inputs correspond to whatever is on the five by four grid on the screen. So for example, if you wanted to trigger this kick, you would get a gate or trigger going in here. Snare would be this one and so on. Plug for cell on the screen. Specifically on the Bitbox module, this four by four grid will trigger samples and these four inputs can be used for modulation like LFOs or envelopes, and potentially you can also assign these for mod as modulation inputs as well. There are four knobs for controlling parameters you see on the screen. So for example, if I dig into one of the samples here, I can use these to control the start and end points of the sample. Um, and home screen always gets you back to the main screen or to settings if you're on the main screen. And you use info to dig into more information about a particular cell. Finally, there's the SD card slot if you want to load up samples, presets, or alternate firmwares. The biggest compliment that I can give to the design here is that when I approach new gear, I check how far I can go without the manual. And with this, after playing around and poking, I can say there's very little that I learned from the manual, which is a very good thing to say for a module this complex. One final thing about the layout, if you prefer to have the jacks on top and the screen on the bottom, you can actually mount this upside down, in which case you go to the settings and flip the user interface and everything will be right side up. You can also get a panel where all the labels are printed the other way around if you like. So with that said, let's look at the three different types of firmware that you can load up to the Series 1 modules. I'll start with Bitbox, then talk about Effectsbox, and then about Synthbox. Bitbox has 16 different sample slots, and each cell can be in one of three modes, sample, clip, or slicer. They're all essentially samples, they're just treated differently. In sample mode, you can play all or part of a wave file, and the goal here is either to have it play as a one-shot sample, and you can set it so that every MIDI note triggers a different sample, and one of the benefits of having a big screen is that it's really easy to load up additional samples. Uh, when you record them, they'll be on the SD card. And um, <coughs> once they're there, you can load them up and populate any unpopulated slots on the sample grid. And I'll speed this up. It's super easy to choose the samples you want. And, and then you can play the sounds either by using the screen. And you can also trigger these samples using gate information into any one of these jacks. But I'm going to be using a MIDI cable going into here because when you trigger samples with CV, you don't get to send velocity information. Whereas here, it supports velocity through MIDI. Now, once you've loaded up a sample, there are a few things you could do to manipulate it. 
you can change start points for a sample as well as end points you've got level control pitch control and panning and rather than just have a sample play once you can create looping points in it play it in reverse if you want you can determine whether when it loops it goes back and forth or just forward and you can set specific sample points or just use the on-screen controls to find exactly where you want to sample to start looping and stop looping and if you're into making really short waveforms out of samples you can do that too you can have them loop like I said either forward or bi-directionally and then zoom in using the multi-touch screen to get the exact sound and or waveform that you want okay now since the dawn of time people demonstrating samplers have been playing dog barks somehow every time I do this it annoys my dog but it's really cool that you can take a sample and not only play it chromatically but also play chords cool so that's the first sample mode which is called sample but there are actually two more in clip mode bitbox can actually behave sort of like ableton both as a clip launcher and a looper let's check that out in action so i've got a blank preset here i'll go into this cell and then i can record from any one of the inputs i've got dfem here plugged into input two so i'll set it to that i can record just hit record and, and stop whenever i want but i'm going to choose to quantize this to one bar in length and set record quantization to one bar i'll hit play i got dfam going in here into input number two and since it's in sync i can hit record whenever i want it's going to record one bar and then stop and now i've got this going i'll lower the volume here this is this loop let's create another one go into here get dfam going again now I'm listening to DFAM, let's change some knobs on DFAM. So you change it to this. And yeah, record it. Right now I've got it set to record one loop and stop, but I can have it restart immediately if I want. And now I'll lower DFAM and you're hearing loop number two. Loop number one, playing in sync. Really cool way to create loops and then play them either alone or together, super easy. I'll plug in a different source. This is a virtual piano by Arturia. I'll go into here and I'll do this to demonstrate the last sampler mode, which is slicing. Now I'm recording a chromatic piano scale as one sample. Now most people demonstrate slicers using beats but i'll do it a little bit differently so this is my sample now one of the things that's hardest for samplers to do is play a piano well because the minute they start transposing the sample it sucks so what i'll do is activate slicing and you can see the sample was chopped up really nicely into the individual notes and now that that's in place i can trigger each note using a keyboard Slicer mode has only two note polyphony, but still, nice. If I don't like where it automatically detected a slice point, I can go in, delete a slice, and create a new one, or rescan if I want. So in sampler mode, you've got four note polyphony, and clip and slicer mode have two note polyphony. There's another really interesting performance feature that is supported here. Just like in Ableton, this supports the concept of scenes really nicely. To trigger a scene, you hit any one of these buttons and it will launch all the clips in a particular row and you can have them loop as well. And there is also the ability, similar to Ableton, to set tracks to either be exclusive 
or not, which means that only one of these samples will play at a time. So if you've got, you've got different versions of a particular clip, you can make sure they'll never play together. A few more nice things about uh, Bitbox. You can choose on a per sample basis whether the sample goes out stereophonically, I'm using these two outputs, or individually to any one of the four outputs, or stereophonically to these two outputs, which is really nice. You can set a sample to work polyphonically or in mono if you want. And you can modulate some of the parameters. So let's say if I want to modulate the pitch of this sample, I can pick one of the three destination slots and then choose a source out of any one of these sources. And I'm going to choose external one, which is this guy. Then I'll go ahead and grab a patch cable. Oops. Out of, let's say, this LFO. Plug it into here, which is external one. And then all I need to do is set the mod amount. And then I can mess around with the LFO rate. And the nice thing is that as I change the rate, look at the screen, you can see the indicator wiggle over here. So that's basically Bitbox. Now let's look at FXbox. So the way to change a firmware is pretty simple. If you just turn the module off and turn it back on, it'll log into whatever's the firmware is that's currently burned in it. But if you turn it off, take out the SD card, and then plug in a new one, and then turn it on while holding these two buttons. It's installing now. And in the time that it takes to tell a dad joke, and by the way, I don't know if I ever told you this, but I got a job at a calendar factory once, and I was fired just because I took a couple of days off. And voila, there's a new firmware version. Okay, so the next module or firmware version that you can run on 1010 Music's Series 1 hardware is FXbox. This one is much simpler than Bitbox, though it does have an interesting twist to it. Overall, it's a real-time effects module. There are 20 different types of effects, and you can activate or deactivate any of the effects in parallel using the touch screen or control voltage. You can also select an effect to drill down into its parameters, then move on to the next one, change that, and so on. Let me talk a bit about the setup. I've got Ornament and Crime timed by Variafo, running a very simple sequence on DFAM going into here. Let's hear it. All right, and if I wanted to apply an effect, uh, let's say, so this is DFAM's filter. I wanted to go into the filter here. The way that I could do it is on the info screen, just using the touch screen. I've got left, right for cutoff, up and down for resonance. So let's go through all the effects real quickly. This is pitch shift. Bit Crusher. We saw the filter before. Up and down is resonance. Ring modulation. By the way, if you just want to turn an effect on or off, just press it from the main screen. This is freeze. Sometimes there's more than two parameters, and then you need to adjust them using the knobs. There's a stutter looper, which you can activate from the main screen as well. And it's got its own parameters too. Now, 
FX box accepts clock. So right now I'm not running clock through the module yet. I'll do that in a bit. But if you get clock in the module, your effects will be in sync. Okay, on to reverse. I'm using this from the main screen because it doesn't have any particular parameters. The vinyl function has four different types of tricks you can pull off, and you can activate them by pressing different regions on the screen. Okay, on to gate, which does what it says. We'll chop up your beat at regular intervals again, can be clock synced, like many of the other effects. Pan. You've got headphones on, right? You can hear this. Or speakers, right? Tell me you don't watch my clips using your phone's speaker, please. Alright, on to delay. By the way, if I didn't mention this, you can mo activate multiple effects at a time using a touch screen, MIDI, or control voltage. Let's move on to the reverb. There's a pre-delay parameter that you can change if you want using the knob. Reverb is sort of the one place where I wish there was more... more here. And I emailed and asked about it, and I know they're going to improve this. So, there's also the concept of presets here. The idea is that you can save the different effect configurations and load them up at once. And each effect also has a built-in sequencer. So the idea there is that you can turn an effect on or off using the sequence function. And you can see here the reverb is either on or off based on triggers in the sequence. And this is where I'm going to sync up the clock. And kids, don't try this at home. A triple stackable cable may hurt the jacks on your module. And I'll take that clock and plug it into the FX box. And now magically, the sequence and the effects, as they are sequenced, are in sync. toggle through a few more presets. And like I mentioned before, you can toggle these on or off using control voltage or MIDI. <laughs> okay, enough of that. Let's talk about modulation. In this module, you have uh, up to three modulations that you can assign. You pick one, you uh, dive into here, you pick which destination you want the modulation to apply to, the amount, and that's how you modulate in FX box. Okay, let's stop this madness. All right. Okay, last up is synth box. Synthbox is a four-note polyphonic wavetable synth. The on-screen controls are very similar to the two other, other modules where you pick an item, dive in, and go back. The CV inputs, however, work a little bit differently. They have two modes. One is a global mode where only the bottom row can be used as CV inputs uh, for modulation sources, pitch, and gate. And the other one where each of the four rows can be used to control a different voice. As usual, MIDI works as well, whether for one voice or up to four polyphonically, and you can mix between CV and MIDI. You can have all four voices go through the stereo out or have each voice go to its own output. In terms of capabilities per voice, you have three oscillators. One relatively simple one with basic wave shapes, and then two more which are wavetable-based oscillators. Okay, let me start with a new preset to show you what's going on. So overall, this synth for each voice has three oscillators. I will go in and lower the levels of the two wavetable oscillators. They're the more complex ones. 
and start with just the basic simple one. It has four waveforms. Saw. Triangle. Square. With the variable pulse width. And sine. Now the other ones are where it gets interesting. Bring the level up of one of them. You can select any one of a lot of different wavetables. And within each wavetable, you can change the position. And if I'll choose a modulation source, let's say LFO1, and get that going. Let's look at LFO1 for a second, right? Triangle is fine. I'll keep it at this rate. And you can see how for this wavetable, the modulation is going through all the different waveforms in the table. Let's check this one out. And there are plenty of those. And you can also import wavetables from Serum, the soft synth, into here. Takes it a bit to load, by the way. And it's always nice to have a visual display of what's going on. And you've got two of these. So I can go ahead and increase the level of this one. Choose... Um, Batman here, and again, modulate this. Let's pick uh, uh, LFO 2 just for kicks. Increase the amount. Go into LFO 2 and mess with the rate. And it's really helpful to see the wavetable cycle through the different shapes. And I'll go into a little preset that I prepared here. Make it a little bit less extreme. So you've got, other than the oscillators, two filters with resonance, low pass and high pass. Uh, you've got uh, effects, flanger and distortion. And then delay. Let me get the filter going here. Oops. All right, different delays. Very nice stuff. Let me start with a new preset just to show you a few more things. You've got, uh, obviously, envelopes, right? attack, and release. And you can have the velocity impact the envelope. Another envelope, which you can route to any one of the parameters that accepts modulation, LFOs we talked about before, and the sequencer is a really nice thing where you can put in a few levels and then run through uh, well, fewer steps. Have it cycle quicker. And it's still not doing anything because I haven't assigned, let's say pitch here, take the source and where is sequencer, here we go. So having a sequencer as a modulation source is a really nice addition to the capabilities of Synthbox. And if I fast forward a bit, I've created a nice little quantized arpeggiation here. And then all I have to do is press one note and the sequence does its thing.
I'm going to play a few more presets for you. If you want to skip ahead, use the index on the left. So let's summarize. I'll talk about pros and cons first in terms of cons. Um, the only fault that I found here is that in terms of viewing angle, if you lay the module flat versus putting up straight, the viewing angles sort of from here and below aren't that good. So if you're mounting it flat, it's better if you turn it around because viewing angles from this direction are much better. Other cons are just features that I might want added in here um, and if you look at their site you can see they're releasing versions pretty regularly so they're obviously listening to their customers uh, i've sent them my feedback who knows maybe we'll see features that i want here but i'm sure they're listening to other people as well on the pro side the series one modules from tenten music pack a lot of power into a relatively small hp size and at $600, it costs more than your maybe average Eurorack module, but you'd need to combine a lot of modules, if at all possible, to get what you get from this module. If this video was helpful, please hit like. If you have any questions, hit me up in the comments section below. Click subscribe and ring the little bell if you want to make sure you see videos like this in the future. Thanks very much for watching.